everyone I thought I would do a video on a pergola that uh, we built here probably three four years ago I've been thinking about doing this for a while and had never really done it so I figured why not this year Get everything kind of cleaned up and kind of put together and uh, thought I would share this um, when I went to uh, research um, building a pergola on my own uh, with help from parent family and all that kind of stuff there just wasn't a lot of good information out there for what I was looking to do uh, there was some information but not really the type of project I was looking for if this is of interest to you if the size and the scale and the design is something that you may be interested in building on your house then stay tuned for the rest of the video. I'll share a lot of stuff that I did and a lot of the details, uh, which I'll put in the comments of this video uh, that can hopefully help, help you out. It's not gonna show you obviously step-by-step step on how to build a pergola, but it will give you a lot of basic information that I hope is useful to you in your project. Uh, the first thing I wanna cover in this uh, video is the lumber used. I got all of my lumber at Menards and everything that I have is rough sawn red cedar. I really like cedar for a pergola. It, it ages well. It's very durable in the outdoors um, because of this natural oils. And I, I just love how it looks. And here's a good um, contrast for you. You see these knee braces here. I didn't put those in right away. Um, I kind of felt that the bracing that I had, the Simpson strong tie braces, uh, would be sufficient but I noticed on the windiest of days the pergola did move a little bit it wasn't bad it probably would have been okay but I just felt over time um, it just might loosen up those braces that were there and since adding these knee braces it has really made it a lot stronger so I would definitely do that that's a lesson learned there but you can see um, I added these last year and uh, so they've been on less than less than 12 months and that's what the entire pergola looked like um, when I first built it or we first built it of course and then you can see the rest of it that's what it looks like after about three four years of weathering I imagine I'm gonna have to probably stain this um, every five six years roughly you always have to stain wood um, if it's outside over time and um, so let's talk a little bit more about the details of this wood because there's a lot of different things that you can use different types of wood again i mentioned i like cedar the best i'm going to move over here to show you again i used rough sawn red cedar and i hope that you can see what rough sawn cedar looks like you see how it's you know roughly sawn <laughs> it's the best way i can describe it most um, wood products are very smooth when they're cut you know maybe more so like this side here looks a little smoother but a rough sawn cedar timber and um, boards are all gonna have that look to it. And I just think that that is what a pergola should look like as opposed to smooth. You know, these are six by six uh, timbers here for these corners. The other thing I liked about uh, these, and I got all of my uh, red cedar at Menards, is that the rough sawn cedar as opposed to just their regular red cedar is is a larger dimension. For example, this six by six post is a full six inches by six inches. If you was to get a regular uh, six by six um, at the um, home, home Depot or wherever, they're gonna be five and a half inches by five and a half inches. It's gonna never be a full six inches. So these um, rough sawn ones are just larger and I just think it looks better and it's obviously going to be stronger and just just for a pergola I just like that fuller dimension lumber so that's really the key uh, key thing another thing talking about the lumber that what I used is everything here was not cut to length and I'll explain that a little bit, except for one thing. These six by six timbers are 12 feet tall. And I did trim those off to line up with these cross pieces here. So they were not that, not that tall. But everything else, like for example, this cross piece here, these large 
cross pieces. Those are two by 10 by 20 feet. And all I did on the ends of them, you see how I have this little feature. That's just really um, a circle. You know, think about like a, a um, pickle container, for example, a lid from something, a large lid. And you just set it on there the way that you like it. And you just draw yourself a line and you cut it off. And that just gives you that simple feature. But that very end tip to the very end tip down there was not cut to length. That is a full 20 feet. And in um, purchasing these at Menards, that was the longest um, board. This 2 by 10 is what those are. That is the longest that they came in. You can get longer ones, but man, the price is sky high. And uh, so if you look on this far side here, and just on further comments on how these were not trimmed, these cross pieces on the top, those are two by sixes by 12 feet. And again, you do the same feature on the end that's just a circle of some kind a lid or whatever you want to use and you just make the little cut that's all that they were cut these are all left at um at 12 feet long so it just made it the waist was next to nothing uh, because you use the full dimension the full length of them so you're not wasting any wood hardly at all and so this again the long pieces, two by 10 by 20 feet. The cross pieces, two by six by 12 feet. Now, looking at this patio size, this patio size front to back, and you see I have a feature there, a fire pit, and then also a place where you can enjoy outside and eat. So just look at this to scale. This patio is 23 feet from here by the grass in front of me, all the way up to that first step that you can see up there. All the way to that step, that's 23 feet. And width is 21 feet. So just kind of think about how a pergola that is 20 feet long, you know, these cross pieces, again, the larger horizontal cross pieces that are 20 feet long, and this size of a patio or a deck, it doesn't matter, that's kind of what you're gonna have in all of your proportions. So if you look on this side piece over here, you know, we really wanted to put a bench out here. And had I not bumped this out, you know, the, the, this bench here would have been scooted in. It would have been in here. And I really didn't want to block and constrict all this space in here. So on this one side here, I bumped these out. These again are those two by sixes like you have on, on the top here. These little two by six guys. You know, all they are is just bumped out. There's four of them there and it works really good for this screen that I'll explain in a little bit. So these on the end, go around here and you can kind of see this side of it. These two by sixes on the end are two by six by 10 feet. And as you see, I got four of them there. And it works out really good for a side screen. It just gives you a little privacy, you know, from your neighbors um, if, if you want. It also can block wind and obviously block sun. I'm standing to the west of the pergola right now. So if you did not have this screen on here, um, you would be getting beat, beaten by the sun. That late day sun would be pounding in on you. And uh, this works out really well to block the sun and also give you privacy. So that little bump out really made the space more useful. And now I could tuck in that little love seat that you see there. I'm gonna give you a close up of this bump out. See how, let you see how I did that. I put these um, support pieces in there. Now I've got these long four inch construction uh, screws. It probably would have held it, um, but I really didn't want these sagging over time. So you can just kind of see how I supported those with pieces of 
of these two by six, just to really support it all the way up. So I'll show you a little bit more detail of this bump out here. You may wonder well, how did I connect these on there? These are these are five inch, you know, construction. And I'll leave the the detail in the description on what these are. But these are, of course, this is two inches, almost two inches thick, full dimension. You know, so these are going to go in, you know, a good three more inches in here. So these will never move. I mean, they move just a little bit. But you can see even after three, four years, they're not budging. They'll never move. And it just, I just like how, I just like how it worked, how it turned out. So that's kind of a um, overview on the lumber used and, and some of the detail. I'm gonna pause and move on to the next thing. And I wanna talk a little bit more about the hardware that I use. And as I mentioned earlier, if you look up Simpson Strong Tie, you'll see they have a full line of products, many, many products. And I'll leave again in the description, you know, what I used. And you can kind of see how those are put on there. Same on both sides. So I just like how those really support those cross pieces, those horizontal supports so another thing for the hardware if you look up here these um, horizontal ones that I mentioned earlier those are connected by these little L brackets you can see those in there so there's four of those on every board you can see one there and then on the other side one up there so it's really the same on both ends there's number three and then number four out here so each of those cross boards are supported by four little braces and they've held up well um, it's not moved an inch and, and um, I really like that just a quick note here look at this spacing from the house you never want to build your pergola all the way up close to your house. If ever you had to replace your gutters or your shingles, you want room for people to be able to work. So I really like this distance. It's probably a foot. Foot distance, so just a little detail. And I'll show you the last piece of uh, Simpson hardware is the base support. Now there's a number of ways that this can be done. This piece here, what I wanted was something that would raise the timber off the ground because this is where your wood will begin to rot. If this was just sitting on the patio, it's gonna start rotting out from the bottom, but this raises everything up a good inch or so. And again, I'll show you in there, I'll show you the uh, specific product that I use, but I really like how these look. All of these, when you look at um, these connecting bolts, these are all three inches when it's only got to go through really the thickness of the metal. There's no reason to have a five inch long screw going through there. Plus you don't want them running into each other from both sides. So um, they're offset a little bit. This one here on the other side is down just a little bit so they don't the bolts don't run into each other which I think is pretty ingenious um, but three inches there and five inches whenever you have to go through a piece of wood so these up here would be five inches long because they got to go through two inches of wood and then well into this six by six again three inches on these Going back down to the bottom here. Now, this is stamped concrete patio, and you can do this a couple different ways, but I plan this pergola around the pouring of this patio. So I actually dropped an L bolt down into the concrete when they were pouring the concrete. I knew exactly where I wanted it, 
and they concreted that in to the concrete so it kind of sits in the very center it's hard to see in this plate here but in the very center that bolt kind of comes up through and it and it holds this down you can see it on the detail if you look up on their website but that's one way you can do it if your patio is already done or if you have a deck as your surface you can um, get these where you just you know screw in you know a concrete screw is probably four concrete screws or through your deck um, you know you would just do that differently but there's different solutions for this but I really liked this um, particular one again because it raised it up off the ground this will never ever rot out you know like a typical one would so that's just an overview of the hardware that I used and I will now go on to the next part of this video okay now just kind of getting into the final little details again you can I'm just gonna show you you know it kind of shows the fire pit that we have and patio set other things that I had mentioned earlier a little planter out here got a place for our grill which is kind of nice in this little little bump out area here got a place for cushions and stuff for all of our patio equipment over here oh I got my Gorilla Grills smoker over there so I can plug right into the, the house and uh, do my all my smoking over there and uh, a couple other little details if you look up here yeah, let me find a good one to see these nails you see these nails that are poking up what I did was I screwed nails down in any place where a bird can sit and make a nest I put those little nails and or screws in there so you just screw into the wood and then you get yourself a uh, um, an angle cutting um, draw, drawing a blank on the name but um, you just cut them off with your angle grinder that's what it is angle grinder and you can see anywhere up there any ledge that you have that a bird can build a nest on I use those because the last thing you want out here is to come out and find that birds are starting to roost and they're pooping everywhere and they're you know upset at you because they got babies in there I have never once had a um, bird nest try to be built out here they will land in there and they won't like little spiky things and they will move on to another place so that's an interesting little detail um, I think the final detail I want to talk about are these screens. I really struggled to come up with a good screen method. There are a lot of things out there. If you look up pergola screens from ones that you can pull with um, a cord to just all kinds of things. And if you was to build a pergola to this exact size, you will benefit from being able to just go and buy yourself these screens and you will be set. <laughs> so I really was kind of fortunate that I eventually found this, but these are really sunscreens. I've used these for three years and they still look brand new. And I wish the sun was a little bit more out, but um, I will leave in the, in, the, in the description the exact um, items that I purchased. So there's two, obviously. One that kind of hooks up underneath here and you can see what I did there. Just put yourself a bolt. This is all stainless steel hardware. Only use stainless steel hardware for these things. So that's just a bolt that goes through, you know, to the other side. And these little hooks, you know, kind of like the end of a dog leash. You just hook on there and then you just weave these through all of those cross pieces and this never moves. This has been out here in the windiest of conditions and you think these screens are gonna catch wind and they're gonna blow and they're gonna tear. These are, because again, be of this rough sawn cedar, it's all kind of a little bit jagged on the edges as opposed to smooth and kind of sharp. So they really gra grasp this screen really well and it just never ever moves. So anyway, I will leave that in the description. I'll come down here to this end here. This is obviously a smaller screen. 
as I mentioned earlier, for privacy uh, from your neighbors and also from that western sun. Um, you can just see that it just, again, hooks on some eyelets here. Give you a good look at that. Pretty simple. Wraps around the outside, inside, outside, and then around. You can see in the back here, you know, they've got little circles on, eyelets on there. So just put yourself some stainless steel bolts in here. I just got three of them on this side. That looks a little bit messy. I could probably get more of these in here. But I really don't see this back side, and you would never know it. But if you want that to look a little bit neater, you can certainly, you know, tie that up better. That would really probably make it look better in the end. But that's all there is to that. So I hope this video really gave you a lot of ideas on how to build your own pergola. A little waste. And uh, yeah, I'm going to end the video now. I hope this was helpful. Have a good day. Just a quick little update here at the end of this video. The sun came out. I wanted to give you a good view of how this screen blocks the sun. But as you see, just looking at this um, concrete here, you can see the difference between full sun and what that screen does. Of course, this is full out here because this is lumber, but this is the screen. Um, it's like a 70% block. It'll say in the description, when you look up this item online, it'll tell you it's like a 85% block or something like that. But I just wanted to really give a good look at that with the sun out. Also, for this screen to work for you, you need to know exactly how I set these um, cross pieces up here. Otherwise, your spacing is going to be way off. And when you weave those in and out, you're not going to come out perfect like I did at the end. So we're going to measure that. We're going to walk up here on this ladder. And we're going to see what this distance is. And look, these two on the end, you're going to put right up next to this six by six. But of course, it's resting on these support pieces here. And you're going to screw in really well, of course, on both sides. That's really going to hold those two pieces on there. You can put four screws in there if you want, but it's a little overkill. So you're going to put those right on, right up next to it, and we're going to measure what this is from the very end. And you can see where you need to have that. About 14 and a half inches is where this first one is going to be as it lines up here. So that gives you good information on how you're going to start those. And then as you get going, let's see what this space in here is. <clears throat> the spacing is also 14 and a half inches. As you can see, I'm really struggling for you here. 14 and a half inches is that spacing. So now I'm gonna give you a measurement from here all the way down to the end. The very last one down there, so you know that total distance. And let's go do that. Okay, here's that total distance from the very end. Down there, remember, is 14 and a half inches. This little distance here from this end to this first board. Remember, that's that 14 and a half inches. So what was this entire distance from the out, from the very end down here? To this very last one here you can see 212 inches that is the total length that you want to have again starting them on both sides of these posts you're going to screw those in like i had showed you before and then you're going to space them and you're going to end up at the very end that total distance is that 212 inches so we're going to do 
the side here for the side screen and that will give you exactly what you need to have for that. I think this may wrap it up. So here is your measurements for the side screens. If you want to buy this exact side screen that we showed earlier, of course that top support piece is hooked onto that. The first one, which is going to be right here, and go out. So the first one, you're going to want the top of that board at 27 inches, it looks like. And then your next board, second of four, the top of that is going to be, what, 47, roughly? These don't have to be exact, but you got a little bit more room to play here. And then the third one, the top of that board, about 68 inches. And then this fourth and final cross piece on this bump out, you're going to be at 88 inches at the very top of that guy. So hopefully that little extra detail uh, will help you out in really getting this built uh, if this is what you wanted to do. So I hope that was helpful to you.